today we're looking at every AFL team's worst trade they've made since the year 2000. I said last week that there'll be one more trade video on the channel for you guys, and I know it is almost a week later, but I've essentially spent the last three to four days researching pretty much every trade since the year 2000 to go through the picks for my worst, in my opinion, that every team has made. And I uh, just want to give credit to channels like True Footy who have done similar videos to this in the past. So if you enjoyed this, feel free to check out the True Footy channel. I'll leave a link to videos that are similar in the description down below. All right, let's start off with the Adelaide Crows. And the Crows have had a couple of shockers since the year 2000. In the year 2000, the Crows trade away Evan Hewitt for pick 23. Even before finding out who pick 23 was, this is certainly a lot over than what you'd think. He only played a handful of games at a north side, struggling to get a position, and only played an extra 15 at the Crows before getting delisted. And pick 23 ended up being one of North's best players I've ever had in Drew Petrie. He went on to play over 332 games in over 15 years, and Hewitt played in just one more extra season for the Crows. I genuinely reckon this is Adelaide's worst deal. You could certainly make that argument that the Carey deal is worse, but I've gone the Petrie one just because I feel like the value that they gave up is probably almost worse. Now, the Brisbane Lions have also been a club that has uh, had their fair share of poor trades over the years. Uh, most probably highlighted as the uh, Favola one in 2010, where they got rid of a couple of first rounders for a player that played less than a season. However, I actually think their biggest stinker was in 2014 when they used all of their draft capital to get Dane Beams. Now, to be fair, at the time, Dane Beams was seen as one of the best plays in the competition. In 2012, he had an extremely good year. I am pretty sure he won Collingwood's best and fairest and was arguably considered one of the best midfielders in the competition. The Lions decided to trade away a pick five, pick 25, as well as Jack Crisp, who only played a couple of seasons at the time. And we all know where that ended up. So Jack Crisp has turned out to be a 231 game player at Collingwood. Pick five turned out to be Jordan Ngoi, one of Collingwood's most damaging players in the comp. To be fair, pick 25 was a bit of a waste. And what did the Lions get out of Dane Beams? Well, Dane Beams played four seasons. He actually started off his career all right at the Lions, winning their best and fairest, but just never really seemed to get going. Had a couple of niggling injuries and ultimately played just the 58 games before requesting a trade back to Collingwood. And ironically enough, that was once again a bad deal on Collingwood's behalf. And obviously the likes of Crisp and Degoe certainly helped the Pies win that 2022 flag. Ironically enough, against Brisbane. And could you just imagine what the Lions would be like if they had the likes of Crisp and Degoe? Now, Carlton have traded away a few stars in the previous years. Sam Jacobs, Zach Tui are a couple of examples. But the pick that I've gone for is uh, Carlton in 2010 decided to trade away Sean Grigg to Richmond in exchange for Andrew Collins. Terrible deal with this one, considering Collins only ended up playing 11 games after being delisted at Carlton not long after, and Sean Grigg went on to have a very good career, finishing with over 200 games, and he was certainly a key player that helped the Tigers win that premiership in 2017. Now, for Collingwood, I certainly could have gone the other end of the stick for the Dame Beams deal, but I've decided to go for the uh, really bad decision they made in 2004, which started off trading away pick 7 and Bo Nixon to Hawthorne in exchange for pick 37 and pick 10. Now, pick 37, it was Mark Lacroix. So if they would have had on to that, it wouldn't have been so bad. Pick 10 ended up being a Chris Egan who played the 27 games. But as you can see here, pick seven was four-time premiership player Jordan Lewis. But obviously, we all know what happened there with Mark Lacroix as the Pies decided not to hold on to that pick. They trade away that pick 37, which was Mark Lacroix, to get Chad Morrison from the West Coast Eagles. He had a decently successful career at West Coast, but it just didn't last at Collingwood with injuries, restricting him to just 21 games, forcing him to retire. And obviously, we all know Mark Lacroix became one of the best small forwards in the league from that point onwards, winning the premiership in 2018, which means that at one stage, the Pies in 2004 could have possibly drafted Jordan Lewis and Mark Lacroix. Now, as we move on to Essendon, they're actually a tougher side to pick in terms of, you know, selection of bad trade deals. Notoriously under, you know, Adrian Dodoro as list manager, they've been seeming to normally nail the trades. If anything, Essendon seemed to be on the other end of the stick, normally getting the good side of the deals, as you'll probably see a little bit later in this video. But obviously, we have to pick one trade that was bad, and the Bombers did have a pretty bad stinker in 2008, where they trade away their pick 39 with Geelong for Brent Prismal. Brent Prismal was just way too inconsistent. He played four seasons from 2009 to 2012 and only managed 36 games before getting delisted, whereas uh, pick 39 turned out to be a pretty handy player in Stephen Motlop. 
He was another pretty, you know, exciting, damaging small forward who ended up playing over 200 games at two clubs. Perhaps that could have been the missing piece in the puzzle that could have helped the Bombers win a final for once in the last 20 years. The next star we have are the Fremantle Dockers. And I'm arguably going to say, in terms of like culprits of worst traders, the Dockers are probably the worst in terms of making terrible, terrible deals time and time again. Because this list is only going back to 2000, I can't include an infamous deal in which the Dockers decided to let go of Andrew McLeod for a player that barely played 10 games. So the next worst trade would have to be in 2001, where Fremantle thought it was a genius idea to trade away their pick one, which I just think is stupid, pick 20 and pick 36, not for draft picks, but for plays. They got Trent Crowe and Luke McFarlane in return. To be fair, McFarlane was actually a very good get for the Dockers. He played over 240 games and was one of Fremantle's best defenders they've ever had. Unfortunately, they just gave up simply way too much. Luke Hodge was the pick one in that draft, and then Sam Mitchell ended up being pick 36 as well. So the Dockers could have easily had Mitchell and Hodge onto their list. Instead, they went with a Crowe to McFarlane route, and to make matters worth for Crowe, he only played the two seasons before requesting a trade back to Hawthorne. And to rub salt in the wounds once again for Fremantle, he went back to the Hawks to win the flag in 2008 alongside Hodge and Mitchell, who they originally had in the draft in 2001. Ouch, that hurts. The next team we have is Geelong, and unsurprisingly, like the Bombers, they've been rarely involved in too many stinker trades. Not many that I can think of off the top of my head. So I've gone back to the year 2000, where the Cats did have a pretty bad blunder in where they traded away pick 27, pick 45, and pick 57 for Eagles Premiership star Mitchell White, and he only managed an extra 23 games for the Cats before retiring, probably due to injury. Unfortunately for Geelong, that pick 27 they traded to West Coast turned out to be 250-plus game veteran star in Ted Richards, who ended up actually starting his career at Essen, but obviously moved over to Sydney. So bad for the Cats, and in a way, bad for West Coast, because they also didn't get to keep this deal. I'm pretty sure they got screwed over, if I'm not mistaken. Now, next up, we have Gold Coast. And to be honest with you with the Suns, there were a lot of options to choose from, which is pretty sad that this is a side that has only been around for half of the amount of time that all of the other sides have had a chance to be featured in this video. In recent memory, they've traded away the chance to draft the likes of an Andrew Brayshaw, Oscar Allen, Liam Ryan, but their infamous trade in 2022 for mine honestly takes the cake. And uh, I think a lot of people probably know this one quite a bit because this only happened two years ago. But let's just uh, quickly refresh your memories. The Suns trade away pick seven and Jack Bowes. And the Suns in return get a 2023 future third round pick from the Cats that they didn't end up using. So pretty much they gave away a solid talent in Jack Bowes as well as pick seven that ended up being Jai Clark for literally next to nothing. And to make things worth, both players are currently flourishing under the cat system at the moment with Bose and Clark being mainstay best 22 players. And I know it obviously was a salary dump, but it doesn't matter. Like that is terrible. The Suns got absolutely screwed over. And of course it's the Cats being the ones to dish it out. For GWS, unlike the other expansion club in the Suns, you know, the choice wasn't as easy for this one. The obvious choice wasn't quite there. The Giants haven't been involved in too many bad deals, but I'll have to give this one to their deal they had in 2017 where they decided to trade away Devin Smith, pick 24, and a future second rounder in exchange for pretty much pick 11. But unfortunately, that pick 11 turned out to be a very mediocre choice. It was uh, Aiden Bonar. He only played like six games for the Giants and the Giants got absolutely no value in return for him. Now, honestly, trading that for Devin Smith in itself would have been a bad deal, but that pick 24 unfortunately ended up being a Noah Bolter, who is a really good player for the Tigers and certainly a player that the Giants could use. Now, we move to the Hawks and the Hawks are another side that kind of like the Bombers, kind of like the Cats, they haven't really been known to make poor trade deals, which probably explains their recent success. This is the trade that everyone seems to say is Hawthorne's worst, and it was in 2009 when they thought it'd be a good idea to trade away a young star in Josh Kennedy to Sydney, essentially in return for a pick 39, which ended up being Sam Grimley. Now, the full trade was the Hawks trade away Josh Kennedy and Ben McGlynn, who obviously both ended up being premiership plays in return for pick 39, pick 46, and pick 70. In fairness to Hawthorne, pick 46 and 70 turn out to be pretty good plays for them in Ben Stratton and Matt Suckling. It ultimately just doesn't make up for how much of a loss that Josh Kennedy would have been in a Hawthorne side that was already star-studded. The next side we have are the Melbourne Demons. They made a poor deal with a catch, which saw them trade away pick 17 and pick 41 for Clint Bizzle. Now, I don't know much about Clint Bizzle, but he was a pretty solid defender at the time for the Cats. And compared to some of the other trade busts in this video, Bizzle was actually solid for the Ds in his early years. However, injuries forced him to retire a little bit earlier than he wanted to. Pick 17 ended up being James Kelly, who was a triple premiership star for the Cats. 
Certainly a defender that the Dees would have much preferred have stay over that span of 15 years. Now moving to North Melbourne, they had a couple of bad ones. I remember they traded away Josh Gibson, who ended up winning three premierships for Hawthorne for nothing. But they also screwed up the possibility of having the chance to draft Shannon Hearn with pick 13. Instead, they traded away the pick 13 and pick 29 with West Coast in exchange for Daniel McConnell and pick 18. McConnell played the four games and was basically useless, and pick eight turned out to be Max Bailey, who gave them nothing in return. Unfortunately, for North Melbourne's sake, Shannon Hearn ended up being a 300-plus game premiership captain, and certainly someone you would have preferred in your list than a Daniel McConnell. Now, the choice for the power also occurred in 2005 with their worst deal since 2000, and I've gone for the deal that they had with Hawthorne, in which they exchanged their pick 14 for Nathan Loney and pick 53. Funnily enough, that pick 53 ended up playing more games than Loney did at the power, and uh, it was just a wasted trade for Loney as he only managed the 40 games before an early retirement. And of course, that pick 14 turned out to be gold for the Hawks once again. And it was just another piece in their three-peat puzzle in which they got star Grant Birchall, who played almost 300 games for the Hawks. Next up, we have Richmond. And even though they did trade away a first round of four Chris Yarrett, who didn't end up playing a game for them, I still think their decision ultimately to trade away Brad Ottens for Geelong is probably my pick for the worst the Tigers have had. The former two draft pick in Brad Ottens was traded away for two first rounders in pick 12 and pick 16. But unfortunately for Richmond, they screwed these selections up pretty badly. They ended up with two players that are mostly unknown in Danny Meyer and Adam Pattinson, who never really broke out for the Tigers. Whereas Ottens, he actually became a really valuable member of the Cats 07, 09, and 11 premiership sides. He became the number one ruckman, and he went on to win three premierships to have a pretty illustrious career. And those picks in 12s and 16 for Richmond, unfortunately were bust from the let-go, and you'd hope for Richmond's sake watching now, 20 years later, that they don't screw up all their first-round selections like they did with Meyer and Pattinson. And we move over to my team, the Saints. Uh, do I really want to talk about this one? Ah, uh, well, I guess we'll have to. My choice for St Kilda would have to be in 2009 when the Saints thought it'd be a really good idea to trade away their only first round pick, which was pick 16 at the time, to the Bombers for Andrew Lovett. In fairness to St Kilda, Lovett was probably worth a pick 16 at the time, but knowing St Kilda's luck that they've had, which let's be real, not great. Only two months later from when that trade was made, he was charged of being allegedly involved in sexual assault. And because of that, the club had to suspend Lovett, and he didn't end up playing a single game for the Saints. Who knows, honestly, what Lovett's career would have ended up looking like if he went to the Saints. And I do remember this, funnily enough, uh, it was the first time I found out that the trade period was a thing. I remember for some reason I was in a Victoria Gardens shopping center in Richmond, and my dad told me about what happened. But of course, six-year-old me finding out what the trade period actually was turned out to be the moment where we made probably the worst deal in the last 25 years, which uh, I find quite ironic, to be honest. Now, for Sydney, I was almost going to go for the time when the Swans trade away Nan Kervis for pretty much nothing. But instead of actually going on the trade they had with the Saints in 2007, where they sent Premiership players Sean Dempster and Adam Schneider to St Kilda in exchange to pick 26. Now, that pick 26 turned out to be Brett Meredith, who, let's be honest, I have no idea about and probably neither do you, because he only ended up playing 16 games, whereas both Dempster and Schneider played almost 300 games combined at the Saints and became very important plays that helped them make it to those 0-9 and 10 grand finals. And as a Saints fan, I do remember those two plays being quite important. And I, I would have to say the Swans would certainly have regretted trading those two, considering they were quite valuable. Now, for West Coast, their decision to trading away Ted Richards for a nine-gamer was pretty bad, but... I'd have to say the decision to trade pick 17 to the Pies for Sherrod Wellingham was probably worse. Now, Wellingham was a decent get for West Coast. I remember him playing a decent role. He, he played five seasons before ultimately getting delisted, but it just wasn't worth what ended up being that pick 17, which the Pies turned out to get Brody Grundy, who obviously became one of the competition's most dominant ruckman, and he was probably the most highly paid player in the competition at one stage, I know for a million dollars a season. They would have had Brody Grundy and Nick Nui on the same team. Potentially having Grundy was a bad mistake, especially in return for a player whose most memorable moment at the West Coast Eagles was a commentary moment made by BT. Now he gives a handball to Wellingham. Wellingham goals. And of course, the final club we have on this list are the Western Bulldogs. I haven't mentioned the Dogs a lot in this video, but they have also made their fair share of bad calls. I mean, their decision to get Josh Shackey or the fact that they trade away a pick that could have ended up being David Mundy. However, I've gone for this one in 2013 where the Bulldogs decided to trade pick 27 
to Essen for Stuart Cramery. Now, in fairness to Cramery, he did play two solid seasons in 14 and 15 before he was suspended, obviously, as part of that Essendon drug scandal. He missed the 2016 Bulldogs Premiership side, and after that, his career was basically done. Who did the Bombers select at pick 26? It was Zach Merritt. And we all know how good of a player Zach Merritt was and still is one of the best midfielders in the comp. And man, if the Bulldogs had a player like Zach Merritt in their side, particularly given how star-studded their midfield was at a certain period of time, bloody hell, they, they probably should have won an extra one or two grand finals. Unfortunately... That wasn't to be. The Bombers ended up with Zach Merritt. And Cramery only played 42 games for the Bulldogs before, I think, moving to the Cats and then getting delisted only a year later. All right, well, those are my picks for every AFL team's worst trade in the last 25 years since the year 2000. Let me know down below if you've got any other honorable mentions. I'm hoping that I haven't missed out on too many big ones considering I pretty much researched every single trade that occurred since 2000. So possibly there's one or two that might have slipped through the cracks, but I feel like I've covered most of the bad ones in this video. Let me know what you thought of the style of this video. I probably will go for a few more of these during the off season, the historical list sort of videos. Uh, for those wondering as well, my rankings for every game that I went to in 2024 is already ready and will be out later during this weekend. So hopefully you did enjoy the video. Leave a like and of course subscribe and we'll see you soon in my next one.